scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It starts by saying above all, above every spiritual equipping you have been given. Now remember that in the book of Ephesians, he's teaching the believer how to sit, a revelation of your position in Christ. Then he teaches how to walk, your walk of faith. Now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy. And he's saying that above all, that you can take a shield, a shield, I did a little of that during the prayer and fasting. I don't know if it was this year or last year. A shield of faith. And then it says, wherewith, with that shield, you shall have an ability. You don't have that ability until that shield is there. That when the shield comes, you will be able to quench how many? All the fiery darts of the wicked. The same wicked one John is talking about. So we know that when it has to do with warfare, Satan is revealed as a wicked man. Wickedness, that the whole world lieth in wickedness. That is the character. Please listen. And then the Bible says that you can hold the shield of faith. And that with that faith you can quench all, not some, the fiery darts. I write to you young men. Don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong. I write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome. Are we together now? First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door, he's teaching the church in Corinth, and an effectual is opened unto me. So he's talking about open doors. Are we together now? Dimensions, access. A great door, an effectual is opened unto me. He said, but there are many adversaries. A door of opportunity, a door of growth, a door of grace. But he's saying, he's teaching us something here. That the moment you see doors opening, don't celebrate, prepare to fight. That a great door is open unto me. But that the moment a door begins to be opened, he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open. The moment you see doors opening, know that there are many adversaries. And so young men, get set when you see doors open, take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one. Are you, are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. That for every door that is opened and effectual, that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door. And that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith. Please understand, I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life. A great door and an effectual is open. 
but many are the adversaries. But the Bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts. Now, listen. It matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom. It matters, listen please, that we understand how we transit in the kingdom. It matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints. Because for many believers, we are aware of promises, but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life, the power, the grace of the kingdom. And so while we are inspired by an expected end, many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So it is true that we fix our eyes on the end, but we are never really taught to understand the many things, the vicissitudes that we will face on the way. And lack of, listen, lack of that understanding can do many things to our experience, including not allowing us to arrive at the end. Spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church. In fact, it's not just the ability to read your Bible, to be equipped. Remember when he talks about fathers, their advantage is knowledge. You are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge. So when he talks about fathers, he says you have knowledge. There is something that you know. When he talks about young men, he says, young men, you are about to know something. You do not yet know it. But in your fight, what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight. So that when you become fathers, you will also be able to guide the young. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Fathers, you have this knowledge because you fought. And that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you. Young men, you are, your advantage is that you are emotion, there is strength. But there are many things you are going to know. And then he says, guard you with strength and stand in faith. Because a door is open towards you, but there are many adversaries. And you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to teach you. It's a very powerful mystery. Many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy. Please hear me. This life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith. Now, I believe in the grace message, don't get me wrong. I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom. But there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight. That destiny is a threat to Satan. The very, the very picture of destiny, your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent. And so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny, they become the center of his interest. Now many believers don't know this. We have all kinds of wise sayings. Don't trouble me. I don't trouble you. And all of that. And we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give Satan, the only way Satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble. You are joking. Go and read your Bible well. The, there is something the moment you carry, that thing calls Satan till you leave the earth. Please understand what I'm teaching you. When there is prophecy upon your head, when there is grace upon your life, when there is a word upon your mouth, 
when there is an interest upon your life satan is interested in you and let me tell you there is one thing about satan he has an undying interest he wants everything god wants and if that thing is you then listen to this message Koinonia is quiet. <laughs> the proposition that many believers have that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there, and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you, that there is faith that overcomes. Follow me as I teach. I have discovered that Satan's assignment, listen carefully, Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith. I used to think Satan was after our faith. I found out that's wrong. Satan is not after your faith. Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. You see that? So what you really attack is not their obedience what you attack is the information if i tell pastor alpha come pastor Femi, come and they hear another voice that says go now that is an attack on information because in either ways it is going to necessitate action please listen to what i'm teaching you Many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent satan just comes in to plant another information please hear what i teach you we're going to go to genesis and you see what happened to adam and eve i i thought satan was after faith action no he's after information Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information, I'm about to die, I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished. One information was introduced. And the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me. This is a kingdom where we reign. And this is a kingdom where Satan operates. And this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally. Whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. 
Our fight, therefore, in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer, listen to me, will be the warfare of words, the warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor, to become an engineer, to become whatever it is, information. One information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering. He receives that information and that information turns his life around. Have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much he places value on information. When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Hmm. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man theologically speaking of, you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, what did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2. God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say, man, leave the garden. Satan does not say, man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. They still need faith to believe this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. 
and they absorb that information verse 5 it says for God knows for God knows I write to you fathers any father including God that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge for God knows that the day you eat thereof your eyes will be opened and then you shall be as gods knowing good and evil verse 6 now he said when the woman saw notice what the information started doing the information was like a drug we are not aware that he touched her he just supplied an information the first thing the information changed was perception the eyes the eyes started coming under the influence of that information and then number two an appetite started coming out that was not there now look at how words are powerful you will now know why God is called the Word of God the compendium of the thoughts of God this is how Satan sent man out of Eden is it not amazing that he never used a sword my brothers and my sisters the greatest battles are not fought with knives the greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns the greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people and the Bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food, the Bible says she partook of it. Ate. That information compelled action. He never touched her, but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action. And then the Bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat. Next verse and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sued fig trees the long and short is he banished them out of the garden this is the first official record in the Bible of man becoming a victim of Satan this is the first if official record of the warfare between man and Satan and Satan won so it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used and he used the weapon of words weapons of information are we together now yes there is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results that information comes i can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of God will multiply you were moving in innocence but an information came I will tell you something about informations I just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information Satan wants your mind because your your destiny is not just God dependent it's also dependent on the information that runs you your faith cannot be based on nothing and whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence of your results that's what Satan wants please listen to me the information upon which your faith is built that is his concern Satan is not interested in your faith as it were he's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted that's it so if I tell Tosin I say Tosin go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman now faith can come because I have released the word is that true yes that word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act so when you see him move you call it faith but faith would never have been there except that an information came now assuming he's on his way going and I now stop him and give him another word I said don't worry go back what did I do I turned his whole life around using information listen to what I teach you there is power in this will you open up the gate open up the door will you open up the gate 
Shalando Siata. Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. One more time, you are asking for the gates of life to be opened. Will you open up the gate? I want to show you why information is power, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm. I want to show you why words are so powerful. God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God. God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were. He names himself after information. If God names himself after information, that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out. Something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life. Something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again. I can stop whatever you are doing now, not by fighting you. I only need to introduce something to you. I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information. And I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information. Google, Facebook, they are a threat today to national security and the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with an information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the word, just stop at my ear and the spirit continued the spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said now listen please that he wanted me to move from where I was to another place and he simply sent a word and when that word got to the gate of my ears it was not it, it had finished his work like a train Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound, it was spirit. And that when it entered me, like a drug reacting to a patient, have you swallowed a drug before? And then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you. You start to feel drowsy and you are wondering. Remember, you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not. It entered you and started reconfiguring you. I know your action by what you have received. 
I look at your destiny and I can, I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information. What did God tell you? Your victory cannot be automatic. So if what did God tell you in your conversation with him? Because in Genesis, when you read Genesis chapter 2, it says, now the Lord came. The Hebrew word is the talking spirit. The spirit that speaks. The spirit that lives by speaking. The spirit that changes a man's life by speaking. Now listen. So for every word that is spoken, there is a spirit. The word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit. It means there is an energizing. Words and information carry energy. They create a climate that compel action. This is where religion and science both agree. That words are powerful. They are shapers of perception. They are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply There is a medical condition called brain damage. There is also another medical condition called loss of memory. It happens a lot with old people. It's a state where because of whatever biological challenges, you no longer have the retention power. You can forget your wife, your husband. And medical people agree that it's a dangerous state for a man to be in. There are people, watch this, who all of a sudden, especially the elderly, after 60, 70 years of living on earth, it could even be a pilot, it could even be a professor, just two months, something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk. His bones were not affected. The information was withdrawn. And he stands up and can no longer move. And you ask him and say, what is your name, sir? And he talks like a toddler. The absence of information turn a man to a baby. The technology of words. Words carry presence. Information carries energy. Whether they are spiritual information, whether they are psychological information, whether they are, they are um, intellectual information, that every time your, the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information, there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment. Ladies and gentlemen, now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation. I show you the reason why men never stay until they win. I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life. Do you know why? Because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated. It's one of the worst discoveries. It is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened. There are still a few nations today. Now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not speaking political. But there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm. From some level of sanity a bit. And the reason why those nations have is the dictators, the leaders there. Worked with the government to stop information dissemination. Is that true? When you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler, 
who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance. There were chants and cliches that they continued to put. It was on radio, it was everywhere. And all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior. And it worked. He built an army not by recruiting men, information. Terrorist groups today continue to recruit people, not necessarily by force. They propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say, I want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it. Whoever told you information is cheap. Whoever told you information is simple. Where God names himself, the word of God, the information of God. So every time words come to you, here's the technology. When a word is spoken, or you come in contact with words or information, the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated. Imaginations cannot be activated until there are words. This is why words are dangerous. Words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations. Halus Calabria Scubedia. Everybody look up. Imagine a yellow orange. Yellow orange. Big yellow orange. Now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife. Are you seeing how whether you like it or not, you are thinking what I'm saying. You are not just hearing it. I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information. Now imagine a mother carrying a little baby. Imagine the baby trying to cry. Are, are you seeing how helpless your mind is? Provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you. But once it is there, it has an ability that not even you can control again. Once it enters, it's like a drug. It starts to become an artist. It paints images about God, about life, about Satan. A little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came. He heard the father or the mother say, Kai, this life self, this life self, and an image began to be created. And that image, listen, it is dangerous because the moment an image is built, your emotions are connected to the image. The moment your emotions are connected to images, creation begins immediately. This is how things manifest. Please, I want you to listen. You will thank me for what you are learning today. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it knows what it's saying. That means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it, that information is not just words. That information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words. They are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today 
have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information. Who has believed our reports? To that man, the arm of the Lord has been made revealed. Words carry spirits. Words carry energy. And this is not some science nonsense. I am telling you, you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance. He said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. That means show a confused man scattered in destiny. Just introduce the word of God to that person. And that's it. Your life will begin to reflect the information that you have. I'm saying this because, listen to me, our generation is very careless over our minds. Our generation is very careless over the power of words. In ministry, in life, people don't seem to have regard for words. Words are powerful. Words produce effects. Words can make. Words can destroy. Words can heal. Words can cause pain. Words are powerful. And if you understand this, words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations. When Satan wants a cause to remain in your family, he does not say cause remain. He uses words, the word of a priest, the word of an elder, words that have come from father to grandfather. Now you believe those words and when you believe those words, they create images. You are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe. That is the strength of the altar. The altar sits on your emotional connection to those words. The day you stop believing those words, you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing. That's why when the Holy Ghost comes, he now tells you, are you not aware that there is another information? Esther, listen, her man came and requested the king to approve an information. And an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting. They were going about every day. They did not know that they had finished killing them by information. Even when her man died, they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man. The real enemy was the information. Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem information and so Esther went to the king and said do you know what you have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people it was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory information words that's what they call a prefool many of you do it People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you. You stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly, because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery then he comes he will create a system around it sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent this is the victory that overcomes what victory the labor in the spirit to protect the information it is real warfare and it produces real victory are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
there are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I, I, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? Notice he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed. As soon as he saw it, he just started becoming glad. Watch this. A student stands in front of the board. He's coming with his friend to check his result. Glory be to God. I'm happy. We'll all be graduates. And he stands in front of the board. And in two minutes, he sees an information. Three carryovers. And that person is there. And for the next one week, he cannot become himself again because an information came. Imagine that while he's standing there, somebody just comes and says, sorry, it's a mistake. It was not your number. Watch, this. immediately he will change back. Now watch this. Look at how you are moving at the frequency of information. Like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action are you getting what i'm saying now that means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act in honor of the persuasions. You receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you become a master at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many 
adversaries and guess how the adversaries act they operate through words through words you will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there you will be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company the moment you hear it it begins to affect you a believer has the responsibility please hear me in honor of your destiny in honor of the purposes of God you have a responsibility under God to set a guard not just over your mouth but over your mind to control the information unfortunately our world today is full of all kinds of information people have entered divination not knowing because in a bid to search for truth they stumble across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer I'm not saying doctors are wrong it is at stage four and usually statistics we built a statistics around this information that at this stage of cancer you have between six months to one year to live any other encouragement you give that man is a waste of time the information has entered let me tell you what will begin to happen my child is only nine years what am I going to do with my nine-year-old child and then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months fear is coming the next thing the spirit of suicide comes what good is living while all of this is happening watch this those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful as though they veto you and walk they depend on your partnership your reception of words now watch this he said young men the word of God abides in you that means when that kind of report comes there should be if you are a believer there should be war within your spirit if there is no war it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information and listen when the word went to hell there was war in hell are we together now Satan mimicking attempting to be the light bearer the word and then the word himself the logos of God there was war in hell and he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the begotten the war happened in the realm of the spirit but the result was seen in the physical realm the war always happens in the realm of the spirit the death happens in the realm of the spirit the defeat happens in the realm of the spirit and all we see is the physical manifestation Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth and then they came out and said wow now we no 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 the battle was won there the keys were collected and he came out victorious and said all hail all power immediately he resurrected he spoke straight up there is something you need disciples come together in three days you had something that changed your mind little children come feed my lamb tarry in Jerusalem the Holy Ghost is coming information that's what he left them with when the angels came they said why look up you know to the sky this same Jesus you have seen he will return that became the basis of salvation the death the burial the resurrection of Christ Paul created a theology out of that information that is where we stand today he calls it the power of God unto salvation please listen to what I tell you 
our children watch cartoons and people get initiated why because of information notice that when these children hear they start chanting what they are saying even if it's part of what they are saying whether or not they understand it and they become emotionally connected to it and it begins to affect them i write to you young men because you are strong fathers you know this you are equipped in knowledge but i write to you young men because you are strong i write to you young men because the word of god is abiding in you and because of that abiding word satan is going to come and when he comes fight what fight the fight of allowing the word of god gain superiority he said let god be true and let every man be a liar this is the warfare of the believer I got a report from home in the name of Jesus let the word of God well up within me I decree and declare there is no death in my family there is no going down there is only rising up the hand of God is upon me you are fighting the warfare you are using that faith that the bible calls is the victory i give you a guarantee there is one thing satan does not have an indefinite power to survive it is the keeper of israel that does not sleep nor slumber satan can be weary But there are many weak believers we sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces we sit down and allow the devil to take advantage do you know there are people right now who are like if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words you will fail you will die your life will not rise you are good for nothing and you sit down and it leads to depression The birth of anything valuable is painful it will require you knowing how to fight satan i'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth internet people go online and type something go online and just put something bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever oh the job you did with that class there is a statistics like this that out of the so 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 million of graduates only three in ten years see let me tell you the truth and I submit to you many information on this earth are useless as far as your life is concerned as far as your victory is concerned you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life if you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information you will lose the anointing you will lose relevance you will lose power your strength is in your protecting that information you must guard yourself is God speaking to us this gentleman sings I can tell him one word your song is beautiful it will take you around the earth he can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager and the manager looks at him and says what tribe are you you are not this tribe mr man i don't want to lie to you i'm sorry another information creates presence listen we are going to pray tonight and many of you do not know that you are in the you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words and because you are connected to these various things they make good things look evil it is this energy that will make good people look like devils even if somebody looks at you and say nice hair you say nice hair for what you are reacting to an energy there are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life so it corrupts your perception when God says I want to lift you like Mephibosheth you say am I a dog God go and lift others 
tonight we have come to tear these things is why people don't prosper let me tell you it doesn't matter what kind of business you do the real business is the business of information is the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere they will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you there was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do. You will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this. Human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. You must be careful what you say to others. You must be careful what you hear from yourself. You must be careful what you hear about others. It is not the information, it is the effect on your life, on your destiny. It is the effect. Um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching a, 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 an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word not said correctly can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. 
second kings chapter 7 hallelujah please look up watch this then elisha said this is the prophet hear ye the word he he wants to change farming now i want to show you the technology until now Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children. Do you think those women started eating their children like that? Somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food. Tomorrow about this time, information, everybody say words. Shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Next verse, verse 2. And then this other Lord said a lot of things. Simply because he did not fight the prophet. He fought the information that came from God. And there was a consequence. He said, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Next verse. Now, watch how God brings his word to pass. Look up, please. We're about to pray. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said, the spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another, are you seeing how this thing works? Arushala Kusiata. They were not talking to themselves before, but an anointing came. As soon as that anointing came, information started coming. Why they said to one another, why sit we here till we die? Was that the first time they were sitting there? They had been there, but see, every word is sponsored by spirits. Listen to what I tell you. When they were prophesying, I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it. They did not hear the prophecy, but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men. And they were sitting, they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them. The next thing, the urge to talk. And they said, why should we sit here and die? And as soon as they started contemplating, go back, go to verse 4. If we say we will enter the city, then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear it says now therefore come they are talking to one another. Let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If we save us alive, we shall die. If they kill us, we shall but die. Look at this. These are people sitting at the gate, running away from hunger. And in minutes, courage comes upon them. And they make up their mind, let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy. If we die, information. Now watch this. Verse 5. And they rose up, what time? At twilight. To go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. What happened? Next verse. Hallelujah. Mako Sibra Katushiata. For the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. He did something to their perception. They got an information. I'm showing you how they ran away. They got an information. And then even a great noise. And they said, the same way the leper said to one another. This guy said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us. Are you seeing what perception does? It gives you ideas that are not there. They, there was no business. The kings themselves were afraid. But here is an information making a weak man look strong. The king that hired against us, the kings of the Hittites, the Egyptians, and so on and so forth to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, 
leaving the camp as it was and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried all of this, verse 9, to tell you it was the Spirit of God. They now said, the same Spirit now made them to pass another information. It would have stopped at them stealing to run away, but the goal would not be achieved. The goal was the salvation of Samaria, not the healing of four lepers. So the Spirit now came, and still made them to say to one another again, we do not well. Same spirit. Can you imagine that? One moment they are stealing and running away and happy. Next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well. This is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning, what if some mischief come upon us? Now therefore come, let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report. That king, we came and found food here. Four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words. I'm showing you the technology. If one of those lepers, just one, said I'm not going, the rest would have been discouraged. It was the spirit of God that made all of them to unanimously agree. Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. There is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally. We are products of the information that we have heard. There is something Koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of God rests. There is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us. Tonight in prayer is a warfare of words. To stand to say, Lord, a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment but the warfare my children are depending on the quality listen let me tell you this the bible says i think it's mark 4 or so did i write it here mark chapter 4 and verse 24 let me show you god's standard it says take heed what ye hear with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you that means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of god you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now i minister deliverance and all of that but i have a little problem with talking about satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again when isaiah the year that king uzziah died isaiah told us what he saw he said i saw the lord i saw the lord son of man what seest thou you must choose what you hear Parus you must choose what you see words is a battle of destiny please understand what i'm telling you it's a battle of destiny words are like drugs the only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth once they enter your spirit they can keep you poor 
they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender to be what you are. This is the place where my flesh gives way. Do to me what you are. This is the place where my life is changed. Do to me what you are. The disciples went into hiding because of something they heard. As soon as Jesus resurrected, he told Mary Magdalene, he said, run, go and tell them this new information. Jesus is alive, he's risen, the tomb is empty. As soon as she went to tell them, that information gave them energy. Listen, you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else i am able i am well able i am well able 12 spies were sent 10 of them came with something called an evil report the Bible did not call it an honest report. It called it an evil. It was their perception they brought. And the Bible says, I don't care if it's not the word of God. It's an evil report. And Joshua and Caleb said, let's go up at once. He said, we are well able. They were the only two that entered the promised land. Listen. Listen. You must make it a project to frustrate Satan in your life. You must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head but the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry, is only the starting point and let me tell you this if you can hold on to that victory the bible calls the fight to protect god's information the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes overcomes lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes in the name of Jesus the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight. Eba la ba shena la ba ya. Eba la la ba 
change from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven. Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are as it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No Every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information.
Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way. But the Bible says, every tree that has not been planted by my father, in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind, you are going to uproot and tear down by faith. Lift your voice and declare, I uproot every speaking, I uproot every foundation, I uproot every perception, I uproot with communication that is not consistent with the character every communication that is not consistent with my goal with my destiny with my dominance I call against it in the name of Jesus is someone praying tonight Hallelujah. Please look up while still praying. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee tense poverty, for it is written. Get thee tense limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan, away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. Speak scripture. It is written. Shut up. 
Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us. We are praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10. Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of fate. And your pruning forks into spares this is not just a time for harvest it's a time for warfare and then he says in that warfare let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich let the redeemed of the Lord say so you are about to say so now this is strategy everything the Bible says you are Everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin. It must be as he said. Show 
Chapter 5, verse 19. We'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine, this is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine, he shall redeem thee from death. In war, he shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day... God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, year seven, he shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers in famine, in war. The speakings and the tongues of men, Lord, arise by the Spirit and let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Rakata, <laughs> 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 
Praise the Lord. Just two or three more prayer points and we are done for the night. Listen to me. You are going to cry to God and ask the Holy Spirit to be the administrator of your atmosphere. Listen. It's a powerful prayer. He is called the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The protector of your atmosphere that your mind will always remain at the presence Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark you are going to pray Spirit of the Lord you were sent to guide me into all truth guide me into the truth formation that would build faith in me for the days that come lift your voice and begin to pray. lift your voice and pray. lift your voice and pray the wisdom of God Spirit of the living God guide me to all truth take away the unnecessary for my life Lead me to information. Lead me to scripture. Lead me to revelation. Lead me to understanding. That build my life. That build my destiny. Koinonia, is this your prayer? Is this your prayer tonight? Is this your prayer tonight? Guide me to all truth. Truth for my destiny. Truth for my finance. Truth for my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Declare ye that ye might test be justified. That means your bailout, your vindication in the realm of the spirit is predicated upon your declaring. Declaring what? What is written? Listen. The word of God that is allocated for every area of your life to produce victory. You are not going to spare. You will speak. Listen. Listen. I told you that words carry energy. They carry presence. They create imagery. They connect your emotions to those images and then they make for creation. This is the technology of information. You are going to pray over anything in your life 
that must change in this season that must change you are going to enforce the word of god with power and grace i'd like you to lift your ma- your voice mention the area that must change place a demand don't let the devil speak things to your ears is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your spiritual life? Listen to me. You can create a new effect. You can create a new atmosphere. You can create a new image. You can win. The word of God abides in you. Open your mouth and declare, declare, declare. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs and wonders. In the glory and the power, I see I'm a sign and wonder. Son of man, what seest thou? Hold on, hold on. You are going to pray. Lord, change my perception about life, my perception about God, my perception about my circumstances, my perception about Satan. Do a miracle to my sight. Lift your voice and pray. Do a miracle. Change my perception. Every image, every emotional connection to every image that is birthing pain, that is birthing impossibilities, that is allowing darkness to reign over my life. Change my perception. Koinonia pray a miracle of the seen eyes. Change my perception. The Bible says, For we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and who are the called according to His purposes. Lift your voice and pray. Change my perception. Change my financial perception. My spiritual perception. My career perception. My sociological perception. My emotional perception. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Shalabaria, Kalabrantos, 
Save my perception in the name of Jesus. Save my perception. My perception of ministry. My perception of life. My perception of my family. My perception of increase. My perception of your purposes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have the last prayer point for tonight. Listen. The victory of the believer is in staying and hearing and seeing the word of God but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror we are changed into the same image not another you will become the reality of the information that enters your life you will become weakness when you hear weakness you will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become strength when you hear strength. Listen to me. You will become powerful when you hear power. You will become full of faith when you hear faith. You will become a man of speed when you hear words of speed. You will become revived when you hear words of revival. You will become a man of fire when you hear words of fire. Listen, your thinking makes your belief system and it translates into who you are. You have an assignment to from today and forever protect yourself. Protect yourself. Protect yourself from the influence, the arsenals of culture, the arsenals of Satan. The arsenals of past, your past, the arsenals of your weakness, career, whatever it is. Make up your mind that you sustain the stamina to stay on that which is written. For the Bible says, listen to me, that heaven and earth will pass away, but this word abides forever. The Bible says he upholds all things, not by ideas, by the word of his power. So no matter what you are going through in your life, you are not defeated if what is written is still in your mouth. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. I'm rounding up. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then and only then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shall have good success. Last prayer. Lord Jesus, magnify your word and the voice of the Holy Spirit above every other voice and influence in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Magnify. Magnify. If someone pray, magnify your word above my circumstances magnify your word above my limitations magnify your word above ministry magnify your word if someone pray lord i want to see your word exalted be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and well.
and above the class of degree you finish with. Oh Lord, believe Lift it above every worry that plagues you down. Oh Lord, believe It is within the power of God to lift a man. It is within the power of God to take weak men and set them as kings and princes. It is within the power of God to prosper a man. Please listen to what I tell you. It is within the power of God to keep a man. It is within the power of God to bring deliverance and to bring salvation. It is within the power of God to give you a new name that the mouth of the Lord himself will call. Lifted, exalted. That when you stand through life, anything that is not the word of God, you have an assignment to fight that fight. It's not a weak fight, it's a great fight. Until that which is written becomes your experience. Until everything that you see is Jesus. Until everything that you see is his grace, his life, his power, his wisdom. Until everything you see is that what you saw in your dreams and your vision now becomes your experience. You continue to set your gaze on Jesus until you see that anointed version of you that you saw in your dream. No matter what you see in your life, don't let men clap you to your grave. If it has not become what you saw, keep pressing. Lord, I thank you, but I keep seeing. We are able to go out and take the country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on our way to hinder, God will surely give us victory. We are the generation that is well able. Regardless of your background, you are well able. It may not look like it until the word of God gains ascendance. Your assignment is to believe his report and to stay there. Apostle, but you do not understand. I didn't get admission. Apostle, as I am right now, I don't even know where the next meal will come from. Apostle, I've prayed and fasted for the anointing, for things to move in my life. It doesn't matter what it is. My brothers hear me. My sisters hear me. You are only victorious when you stand on God's side. Stand. Continue to exalt his word. Lift it above. Once he stands above, you will see what that word will do. It will become not only an anchor, it will become a cover. It will become the basis for your victory. Hear me? Even the hand of God wrote twice. That means whatever was written can be rewritten. Did you hear what I said? The hand of God wrote once and wrote again for Moses. Isaiah, go back to Hezekiah. Tell him I have changed my mind. Hezekiah, there is no death for you again. Please pay the price to know God. Pay the price to know God. Hezekiah, you will continue to be king. I have shifted the song to prove to you that I have rewritten. Esther meets the king and says, write again, O king. It was her man that deceived you to write. You wrote death. It is within your power to write life again. And the king said, bring me the paper. And he wrote and stamped it. Hear me? No matter what has been written over your life, I stand by the word of God. Listen to me. In this kingdom, please hear me. There is a heavy anointing on me. I want to pray for you. Listen. It says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. 
Bible says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I want to write something in your life by the Spirit. It is true that what was written can be rewritten. Mm. Please, you don't have to kneel. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. It is true that the ordinances and the appointments of death, the appointments of failure, it is true that the expectations of wicked people waiting, believing that your family will not amount to anything, that your life will go down. Tonight I stand by the Spirit, indicting a good matter. He said, yeah, I speak of excellent things. And he says, my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. I stand by the God of heaven who calls men by his grace. I declare whatever was written that is an appointment unto death, I change it and I speak life to you now. Hear me, if Esther did not come to Mordecai, it was not only, if Esther did not come to the king, it was not only her man. Hear me, look at me, let me teach you a mystery. If her man died and Israel died, God lost. The verdict that was in the presence of the king was not just for her man, it was also for Israel. And Esther came and said, King, write again. The verdict that plagues families and plagues individuals, hear me, it is not only for your grandfather alone, it affects everybody. It is not only for Nigerians alone, but we are standing like midwives, like Esther, to say, King, write again. In the name of Jesus, every appointment unto derision, unto death, unto causes, unto woes, I stand as one who stands by the election of grace, and I declare that ordinance is changed over your life. Please help them. That ordinance is changed over your life. Hear me. It was unfortunate for Herod. Herod spoke against Peter. And he was speaking against the gospel. But there were saints who were praying. There was nobody to advocate for Herod. Herod fell from his throne, died immediately, and worms came out of his body. They are taken for a prey, and none said, restore. Listen, restoration is advocated for through the power of prophecy. I decree that anything that has become a programming over your life and destiny to sabotage the purposes of God over your life. I stand by the power of words and in the name of Jesus, we create a new outcome for you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. 
it is only within a distance that is beyond your reach there is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them there is a force of attraction I prophesied as I was commanded it says and the bones they were all there just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there everything you are looking for is looking for you too and there is a force that can connect you to them please listen I'm not just motivating you the things that we have heard the things we have seen the things that our hands have handled that who is he that saith the thing and it comes to pass that God did not vet it and approve it let God be true and let every man including your situation be a liar listen to me please hear me a miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick not everybody is sick you see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now you see people talking like fools on the road someone in early 20s talking to himself moving around this our road from here to Abuja almost every day someone is dying nobody leaves his house to die worry pastors collapse on stage I've told you that there is a technology that sends Israel to Egypt it's called hunger every time there is hunger Israel must go to Egypt to find bread Genesis 42 please give it to us let's just read it I apologize the projection is not very clear but just see that scripture now everyone read if you can see it we're reading one and two ready read now when Jacob saw that there was what corn where in Egypt Jacob said unto his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 and he said behold I have heard that there is corn in Egypt get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die this is a prophet but lack of corn was making him mortgage his children go to Egypt I'm a prophet but we're about to die and I hear that wherever there is corn that's where people go to look let's not lie to ourselves wherever there is corn that is where people go to including a prophet he had because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all and that even the king is fed from it when there is corn in Egypt believers will have to go down there we need time to serve the Lord we need time to bet the revival that he wants to bring we need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom but that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt it's a cost to go down to Egypt but if that is the only place that has corn then you will have to go down to eat and then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph and the people of God got into servitude and slavery don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter you just serve God like that according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness everyone say after me life, life. godliness life, life. godliness there are things that pertain unto godliness your character your work with god your prayer life your spiritual development those are things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life your children's school fees your accommodation the well-being that any man who is unable to cater for his family according to scripture has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel so when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter and your eyes the letter is usually typed except where the money will be they write it with biro and the price is doubled you stand there wanting to kill your son why has the school fees been doubled and the said they just gave me to give you and you look at it your salary is not increased nothing else is increased but the bills are rising 
the devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pain. Hunger can take men to Egypt. Hallelujah. A dear man of God called me, I think uh, two weeks or so. I don't know him so much. And from one of these nations. And he called me and was lamenting. He said, Apostle, pray for me. Our ministry is under serious financial attack. He said, right now, honestly, the way things are, we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills, you know, things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed and you know i got angry in my spirit i said this is the kind of news satan wants because you see very soon the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright? Only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on. There are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence. Do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible. Healthcare is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. One of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman. And when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. No. I said, I said, <laughs> and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? Anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child. Let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at. Real issues. And this night, God is determined to rise up and not only step in, but turn things around. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10, please. It says, the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say, who is that? He said, the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender. You will call the police immediately and say, there is a thief. There is an armed robber in front of my house. And Jesus is preaching here. And he says, the thief cometh not. That means you will never see him around. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So everywhere you see stealing, killing and destruction. Is a signature the thief satan he comes into a joyful family are we together happy husband come my dear happy wife when the thief comes in between them he must scatter everything one flimsy excuse or the other he will come in between business partners and shred them when satan passes a place you know this is him he will leave his signature stealing killing destruction we would be in trouble if jesus stopped there but he says i am come mm. he didn't say i have come i am has come to bring life and that you have that life more abundantly 
lavishly. I am come that ye may have life. I am come that ye may have solutions. I have come to show you that there is a way out of this. I am come to show you that there are possibilities. Are we together now? Now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray. I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion. The Bible says, according as his divine power. Please give it to us. That's second, first, um, second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 please grace and peace verse 2 be multiplied unto you at, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord verse 3 it says according as his divine power hath given us so what gives us in this kingdom his divine power never forget this it is not faith faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass the agency the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power for many years there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing there is no argument there are we together faith is the pipe that the power of god flows to to carry supernatural solutions to you if there is no faith there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation it will not be possible you don't choose faith or the power of God. That's not a theology taught in the Bible. He never taught any of them in isolation. His divine power. Every request on your list will be solved by his divine power. Now let me teach you this. I've taught you again. What is on you is what controls the results around you. Please never forget this. The results around you do not fabricate themselves. The results around you are mirrors. They are a reflection of the kind, the level, the dimension of the grace that is upon you. So I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. It is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. The testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open. It just depends on the grace asking it to open. Everybody is a giver. It depends on the grace that asks them to give. Someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say give me the privilege of blessing you nobody's really stingy the problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension they are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed the earth is a realm of execution the same way your body is The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria. Here comes the prophet. He did not come to solve the problem. He said, ah, okay, I see that there is a situation. Everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet. He said by this time tomorrow then a foolish man said even if God will open the window of heaven how will these things be and he says you will see it but you will not partake of it I believe in the power of God I've seen what the power of God can do stop wasting your time trying to change things physically creation has never been disobedient creation is the most obedient entity you can find 
the money you are looking for is not disobedient there is an unction that calls it if it's not there it is authorized to leave you creation is obedient when Noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the Bible never said Noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to Noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk you rest only when the grace walks let me tell you life is hard when you are walking on your own in this kingdom we don't walk with our hands our hands only help us to receive the grace when it comes you enter your sabbath are you getting what i'm saying now the power of god is the spiritual mechanism responsible the signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs they will happen according as his divine power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed with the holy ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him there are people inside there are people outside there are people standing in such sacrifice waiting for god it will be very wicked to share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ and tell everybody bye-bye return back with your challenge no i want you to believe god tonight and insist lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for god to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that god gave man is a fundamental right it's not for christians once you are a man you were given the right to choose salvation even at the detriment of your going to hell was left for your choice god will never 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 violate your right to choose i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you choose life i said before you prosperity and poverty i said before you success and failure i said before you spiritual growth and and a low level of spirituality it's up to you to choose i choose life oh, and everything that comes with it i choose speed i choose increase i choose honor I choose dignity I choose open doors I choose open heavens it's a choice and if you're a family man here as for you and your house you can't choose for the whole world but you can choose for your house that the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight and that within the next one month things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you if you do not believe these things exist you are not a christian a christian is not just one who is born again a christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life hallelujah i'd like you to believe god don't say i've come for miracle service before you see let me tell you the truth my assignment as a man of god is not to invite you my assignment as a man of god is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in january must answer in june otherwise what is the superiority of growth if the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now i'm only maintaining my spiritual level i'm not growing There was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles. They went to Jesus asking a question. And they said, why couldn't we do this? He said, this kind 
there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no you have to understand this it's very important to know i have let me just steal five ten minutes to explain this look at this this is one thousand naira. look at this and if i give you this one thousand naira, it can buy a bottle of water is that true it can even buy you lunch or dinner depending on where you eat but this cannot buy you a car this cannot pay a child's school fees but it is still money so if you want to pay a child's school fees you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it not every grace solves every problem if every grace solves every problem then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace Acts chapter 2 they were filled with the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 4 they were filled with the Holy Ghost again to what end it says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son there was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing Gehazi carried his rod the rod of Elisha and he came and laid it on the dead body the body did not rise but when the prophet came that dead body came back to life every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it i know men of god have prayed for you they are not fake just because you did not get the result it is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace and god grants the privilege of grace and that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of growth. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet lift your voice and begin to mention specifics unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come rise up on your feet and please pray oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah my life around turn my life around tonight turn my ministry around turn my family around is someone praying turn things around hallelujah praise the Lord we are going to be very fast I minister by the spirit and the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God praise the Lord it will be very very fast I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast our time is gone but let your heart be open there is a God in heaven Please don't be used to your situation. 
if you're a visitor here and you came come insisting that i did not leave where i left to be here only to return back with stories uh-uh that is not the god that we serve are we together hallelujah there are three people the power of god is coming on outside overflow one please i'd like you to bring them out here please let's start very quickly we're going to pray three people the power of god is coming upon them right now three people the power of god is coming upon them right now a very strong anointing please bring them very quickly and then and then we'll pray and then we'll pray when you have them please bring them very quickly the lord is already moving listen let me tell you the truth i want you to believe believe that god will step in and turn your life around hallelujah turn your life around from the back right to the center i'm seeing the power of god come on someone now from the back right to the center from the back right to the center please bring them out right now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this robe. Right now, it's like smoke just moving across. Right now, from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by His Spirit. Remember the Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And it says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I command every oppression of darkness I want to pray now I see fire in this place this is what I'm seeing by the spirit of the and listen at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus that every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ responsible for any challenge and any predicament it must let you go now inside and outside online are you ready father let there be deliverance right now one two three shout jesus jesus i cause every power bring them out right now every oppression of darkness it must go now it must go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh 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 Please bring them out quickly I'm still praying The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now be open now be open now, now. close doors over families Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. I decree and declare, be open. Be open now. Bring them out, please. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three. Across the road online be free now yeah. 
Hallelujah. I'm seeing I'm seeing like stones in a vision. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm seeing like a strange fire. These are representations of altars. Listen, there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances. Fire is about to come from heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let fire from heaven liberate that family right now. One, two, three. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, we blot out handwritings. We blot out handwritings. Bring them out. I cause altars, yokes of darkness, ordinances, speaking against the people of God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states. The eastern states. Right now, God is bringing deliverance. The east, Abia, Anambra state, Enugu state, Epoi state. I'm seeing an anointing right now. Rest on people within that state. Let there be liberty right now. Let there be liberty right now. You belong to that state. The power of God is coming upon you. Right now. Right now. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. I'm seeing the map. The east. God is bringing liberty. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the map again. I'm seeing an arrow. And I'm seeing it go to Benway. Benway State. Right now I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway. That anointing, you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State. Benway State. Liberation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Release their destinies right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front. There are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference. I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now. Bring them out right now by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Things must change in your life. My friend, this young man, lift your hands where you are. There is oil being poured on your head right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let him go now. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Can't wait. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. 
fire is still falling here i'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women an entity comes to molest you in the night you go to bed and a strange spirit just comes right now with the name of jesus the lord is asking me to just count two and at the count of two that fire is coming on people right now one two let that fire come now liberation from ordinances of darkness every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny be free now all those in front here i decree the power that holds you i come by the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three let them go now one two three go leave them now release their destinies right now let there be restoration everything that has been stolen from hell i command the restoration by the spirit of the living god by the spirit of grace the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty be free right now please open your mouth and begin to pray everything that must live your life insist it must live your life now the angel of the lord is removing arrows i'm seeing arrows arrows coming out of people that's what i'm seeing arrows 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 right now right here arrows arrows go now arrows are being removed out of people in the name of jesus madam be free right now be set free now the lord is setting someone free here right now someone in this row i'm seeing fire just resting on someone be free right now in the name of jesus everything that has held you bound be free right now be free right now be free right now be free right now in the name of jesus be free right now be free right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus those outside keep praying something is resting upon you right now the lord asked me to come to overflow one i want to pray for you there is an anointing right now i stretch my hands fire from the front to the back everyone under any kind of yoke right now as i'm passing be free be free help them please out now release their destinies release their destinies now please help them whether you are an usher or not help them that yoke must let you go now that yoke must let you go now i'm passing this road right now once i pass you the anointing of the holy ghost is taking everything that is not of god release them now release their destinies now release their destinies now let that fire rest upon you right now everything that has refused to open be open now be open now be open now be open now close doors be open now be open now now listen overflow two i may not touch you but in the name of jesus i pass your role except god is not god if there is anything sitting on your destiny it must let you go right now be free be free I bring you the anointing of the holy ghost be free now open up your gates your gates gates be open destiny be open now be open in the name of jesus be open now in the name of jesus be open in the name of jesus be open in the name of jesus fire is resting on this road just right there i'm seeing someone the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now i stand by this grace help her please anyone here anything that is not of god sitting on your destiny 
right now at the count of three all of you just i'm seeing fire right now and i'm seeing chains broken from people's legs right now be be set free now be set free now be set free now be set free now there is a lady here god is saying it is over right now i'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now help them please whether you are an usher or not please if anybody is falling close to you so they don't injure themselves hallelujah please shift that lady be free now i'm pointing my hands to her i command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now in the name of jesus christ begin to pray begin to pray overflow three pray pray overflow three something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now overflow three i came with an anointing at the count of three shout jesus fire is falling from the top to the bottom one two three go 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 now every yoke every altar be free now bring them out whether you are an usher or not bring them out every oppression of darkness right to the back i declare by the anointing of the holy spirit be free now be free now bring them out I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ. Release God's people right now. At the count of three. I'm seeing fire resting on people. And I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now every door that has refused to open i open that door right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there are 27 people here the grace for speed is coming upon them I don't know who you are but right now the grace for speed i stand by the anointing from the front to the back right now in the name of jesus receive that anointing right now speed i release speed over your life over your destiny receive speed in the name of jesus speed in the name of Je hallelujah overflow three hear me there are people here the lord is telling me no one rises in your family when they get to a level something brings them bow and the lord is saying i should shift you by prophecy i stand right now i don't know where they are but the anointing of the holy ghost is going to come upon you right now in the name of jesus i'm seeing the number 17. lord i don't know where they are here but in the name of jesus i declare move to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you. Oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
there are 15 people here overflow three the spirit of revelation is coming on you unusual insight i don't know where they are but right now i'm seeing light not fire light light coming on people 15 people step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace right now in the name of jesus Yahweh, Yahweh. hallelujah praise the lord main auditorium please lift your hands main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing seven people main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing seven people the grace for speed i'll pray it on everybody but the main auditorium there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people they will begin to run by the anointing right now please hold them so they don't injure themselves main auditorium i stretch my hands at the count of three like elijah may that grace come one two three receive that grace right now in the main auditorium step into the anointing for speed in the name of jesus overflow three lift your hands every door that has refused to open over your ministry over your life held down by witchcraft in the name that is above all names at the count of three i'm seeing doors open in the spirit one two three let that door be open now be open now be open now The Lord wants to avert death over a family. This year alone, between last year and this year, four people have died in your family. Four people have died. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an anointing is coming upon you right now. Let death be averted now in the name of Jesus. Now listen, all of you at Overflow 3, and the extension there whatever must live your life as i'm passing this place please i am releasing my faith open your mouth now and declare lord it must live my life now go ahead go ahead pray please all those in front here the spirit that ties your destiny i command at the count of three let them go now one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of god is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end. The power of God is resting on someone by my left here. Right now, receive that anointing. Let it go in Jesus' name. Be free right now in Jesus' name. The power of God is resting on someone here. Right here, I'm seeing an anointing. Right now. It's a prophetic grace. There's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you. Right now, by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over. Over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me my friend. The Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit. I lay my hands on you. Drink of that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing what looks like smoke just this region where I'm where you're looking at me right now there are four people I'm seeing the power of God like a wind just coming on them just this row right now Lord where are they I stretch my hands right now right now the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over he's taking away captivity four of you by the spirit of grace let it be over right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus,
there is a family here marriage does not happen in that family but i'm seeing fire rest right now the embargo is being broken now the embargo is being broken whoever those people are an anointing is coming on you now for the sake of your family that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now is breaking right now in the name of jesus please lift your voice and pray everybody pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there is one of you among those standing here there is a call of god upon your life an anointing is coming upon you you will be mightily used by god where is that person spirit of the living god the hand of god just near the gate here the power of god is coming upon that person right now a new dimension in the spirit the eyes that see and the ears that hear may you step into that level in the spirit in the name of jesus christ my friend touch this gentleman for me lift your hands i stretch my hands over you i command i'm seeing chains all over your body i command those chains to give way now in the name of jesus release him now let him go now by the power of the holy ghost i cut those chains i'm seeing chains from your head to your toe let me pray for those here please all of you are here i'm the lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence i'm seeing snakes and i'm seeing five people there is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now in the name of jesus may the anointing of the holy spirit locate those ones now five of you right now these spirits my god my god i'm seeing something living right now release them now release no matter how long release them now it is written that even the lawful captive shall be delivered i declare emancipation now by the spirit of the living god You are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? If you came here alone, what do you do? I want to pray for you. The spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have, seeing dead people, is that true? You have dreams and... Too much, yes. The Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now. I declare in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy In the... There is there is someone here a pandemic delay over your family is breaking right now i just please don't be carried away acting this thing i shortly to help people experience god i'm praying i don't know where that family is but now scattered in this congregation i stretch my hands let the anointing of the holy spirit family right now I'm seeing a family here. None of you has a job. None of you. There are even a few graduates, but nobody at all. It's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up in your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work. Effectually. Now, step into that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen among all of you from here to here the grace for speed is coming on two people listen those two people will start running now please hold them hold them so they don't enjoy themselves that anointing right now all across two you can't control yourself hold them please whether you're an usher or, i release that grace speed two people strange speed god is ending delay right now 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing two of you a prophetic anointing you are not prophets but you have been desiring this grace the grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands may that anointing find you right now accuracy of sight and help them help them please help them please in the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ an angel of the Lord is taking away reproach there is a family here the Lord is saying the captivity ends now an anointing is coming upon you right now it's now in the name of Jesus someone here is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb who is that listen where where is she at home yes. uh, uh, what of you come how long who has had three miscarriages she did. three miscarriages go and tell her she will have a baby girl that the Lord is giving her a baby girl in the name of Jesus I pray for you both in the name of Jesus let it come to an end right now let that captivity come to an end in the name of Jesus there's someone here your family has a court case who is that please court case don't make sure you don't tell us please they want to kill you because of what what did you do what did you do hold on I have to where are you from where is that I have to pray for you you have bad friends hold on let me talk to you eh? you have very bad friends bad friends you need to be delivered this is not even your whole life eh? you know what I'm saying right you need to repent eh? listen when I make an altar call run and come because the real salvation is you it's not the issue of court case of this you you have friends that are criminals and we have to pray you hear what I'm saying God is locating you to help you listen let me tell you my dear people I mean when God locates us like this is because he wants to help there's somebody here your name is Sarah where is that person Sarah hold on please don't don't let me just prophesy I, I my heart is full God wants to visit people stand up who is Sarah where are you from huh where are you from no no where state of origin I want to pray for you who is Godia yeah Godia the Lord wants to visit you right now acting God truly wants to change your life yeah? I want to pray for you whose mother is in the hospital I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here your mom come I'm seeing that down in Portacot what uh, yes I Portacot you came from Portacot go on I'm going to pray for do I know you have never seen you I want to pray for you God is turning your situation up is as you are standing let your heart be open your people may be far don't ever think I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you to let you know that you must not make it inside you win are we together the power of God is going to come upon you a loud shout that will be personal prophesy to right now in just those outside here it's not something you can stand this is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God that's not the shout the shout is coming it's a loud shout please bring the person when that happens that's the shout bring the person in the name of Jesus Christ 
my friend lift your hands Jesus come do you what are you doing what do you do of God your own church you are assisting someone you came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother but you came to take fire stand up why you came listen to me you are going to go back and you will step into a dimension signs and wonders that will surprise you Sarah in the name that is above all names every oppression over your family I come against it right now I'm still hearing that name Godia who is that hold on please hold on where are you from huh you are from Kad Saminaka hold on please your sister blood sister same father same mother you've been praying for God to locate you it's okay you hi the spirit of death is over your family huh? that's what I'm saying I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people they will come and they are calling you sometimes they are saying you should eat together this is the spirit of death coming on the family but in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you, help her. I cut the spirit now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family. Money does not stay in your house, no matter what happens once resources enter you love god but resources something must happen either sickness or they will steal it or something will come up i'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship father where are they right now i stretch my hands let that anointing locate you right now in the name of jesus christ please lift your voice and begin to pray my friend your hands shout jesus as loud as you can an end comes now in the name of Jesus Christ please lift your voice and pray in the spirit everyone my dear look at me I command that spirit to leave you now of darkness must let you go in Jesus name lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit everyone madam help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it I command everything that is not of God to let you go now. Release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oppression leaves right now. Someone here, there is a spirit that has oppressed your family. It must go now. I command that devil of darkness, help her please. That spirit must leave now. In the name of Jesus. Please everyone pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. God is visiting us right now. Shela kaproska da barunda shala kose. Shela kaprande gede balakatosia. One media person here. There is an anointing resting on someone. The Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family. I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God. Captivity coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, let it end now by the Spirit of the Living God. Let it end now in the name of Jesus. My friend, I'm seeing what, what looks like a towel on you. And the Lord is wiping away infirmity. In the name of Jesus, infirmity, let it go right now. Please make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. The Spirit of death. There is a family here. That spirit must go now. The spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come Are you a man of God? Come, you too. Please come. I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir?
where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me, from Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer. Is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I, what's your name? They always confirm before you are Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer, is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From this is my state. Huh? From GRA. No, no, where, where are you coming from? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does Amen. it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Well, this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 Yes, I will pray for you. Mama, where are you coming from? I come from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday? Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my daughter in America. She's the one that sent me to you. She has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come so that through me you will locate her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter but it's you first that back pain huh? that back pain that you have you get up in the morning and there's severe back pain that back pain will leave you now that's number one number two the dead people you see in your dream huh? sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died but they are alive talking to you i need to pray for you and then number three god is going to visit your daughter tell her the month of august is a month of breakthrough in the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? Sir? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, Dambo International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, sir. Where? with uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did I you apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Huh? I will pray for you, sir. Because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one? Yes, sir. I have one no, hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes, and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. The, yes, sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you, are great children you understand please don't fight that child eh, madam you hear what i'm telling you yes i know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come but may god grant you the grace to manage things well sir there is a grace of wealth that is upon you please look at me 
it looks like you're a teacher but your destiny is not a teacher you are a real kingdom financier and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you please look at me you see this woman she's a good woman don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman and don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch in the name of jesus i tell you god gave you a good woman she's a good woman madam you're a good woman in the name of jesus let me pray for you sir please hold my hands in the name that is above all names i open up every closed door over your life and destiny i shift you to that realm of wealth in jesus name the person look up please the person who comes to molest you when you sleep it comes to an end now in the name of jesus every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever in the name of jesus i don't know why why are they here who is sarah are you married we are no more together huh I have two children, but we are not together with you. You are Father. not together with your husband. Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness my dear in the name of jesus is it the same man that has the children yes huh yes why doesn't he want to marry you he didn't pay for my dowry he didn't pay for your dowry yes go and tell him that i said he should pay for your dowry huh yes. dowry is not building project he should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance please at this level it's no longer about their comfort the children need a father May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, 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 just please just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit is a covenant it's not a desire coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble right now that spirit please help them in the name of jesus inside outside everywhere the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now sir let me pray for you where are you coming from sir Port Harcourt. what do you do to business you do business but things are not going well huh if i don't pray for you i'm seeing you in the court because of money debt huh i hope you're not embarrassed you came here so that i pray for you what are you trusting god for i'm trusting god for breakthrough in my business breakthrough in your business first my, your my wife uh, has listened to your tape for about seven days now and the last dream she had you came to pray for her as she insisted that you come through the night today I will pray for you more than business breakthrough sir is your relationship with god do you understand please don't be embarrassed but your relationship with god in this kingdom we prosper as our souls prosper not at the detriment of our soul so that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life i pray that god will cause your hearts to love him more than money in the name of jesus and that in so doing he will bless you and lift you I decree and declare i don't know why all of you came but in the name of jesus i declare that everything that is not of god leaves you right now where is this lady from come where are you from i'm from nesara state you are from where nesara how many are you 
I'm from extended family. We are many. Plenty. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone. We are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the Son Amen. of the Living God. He will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time, he cannot call you, he's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? Tom, you have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I'm Lenny Salon. Huh? I'm Lenny Salon. You are, I'm not here. I'm Lenny Salomon. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see this kinds of vision. The moment I see this kind of things is a sign that you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone. Every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you're not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy. Open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you're doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing, trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? Particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen. Listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here that's overflow two um overflow three is from the end of cgc down to second equa okay you are overflow two b let's call it two b are we together then the overflow from the beginning of this fence down right down there we'll call you overflow two c please listen then there's overflow three i don't know if you understand what i'm saying this is the main auditorium. This is overflow one. This is overflow two. Then from this place down to second equa is overflow two B. From that same place down is overflow two C. So that, so that you would know if you are trusting God, no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb, I'll pray for you. But then all who are in here, overflow one, I mean overflow here, please, you're trusting God for healing. Come stand here. Overflow 1, come and stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2, stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2A, please create a space for them there. Overflow 2A, create a space for them there. And then overflow 2C, stand in front of your projector stand. And then overflow 3, you can stand in, um, in front of your projector stand. Those online, connect by faith and then we'll pray We'll pray with you we're going to do this very fast we thank god there are many hands today and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you are a man of god you are a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders make sure that you connect 
the worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that and concurrently while that is happening please make sure you submit your prayer request everyone make sure you pen down your prayer request and then we are going to pray on it and let the god of heaven visit us right now in the name of jesus praise the lord um Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh. Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh will do Overflow 3. There are quite a number of people there. Overflow 3. Um, Benga will do Overflow 2. Overflow 2. Pastor Alpha and Ima. You do Overflow 1. Um, overflow 1. We need a way of reaching Overflow Kenny Kenny will do overflow 2B overflow 2B will do overflow 2B and then Isaac Isaac in media you will do overflow 2C let's make it that way praise the Lord Father we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that as we minister to everyone across, let your healing power touch, deliver, set free in the name of Jesus. Do this and be glorified even by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please, we'll do it very, very fast. And while you are seated, make sure you are agreeing, releasing your faith in the name of Jesus. Madam, you lift, lift your hands. You, this woman. No, the one wearing blue and white. Yes, lift your hand. I'm seeing oil coming on your head and the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what I'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of Jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of Jesus Christ amen Let's stretch your hands to the prayer request. Begin to pray in the spirit. Lord, you are the God that answers prayers. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Pray over these requests. He said, these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. There is a covenant of answered prayer in this place. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I decree and I declare. I prophesy, I proclaim by the spirit of grace. That this is a representation of the pain of people, a representation of their hunger. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, are you praying? Decree and declare that everything written here in the name of Jesus will become a testimony. Everything written here, we invoke the power of the Holy Ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of jesus admissions graduations jobs marriages children restoration advancement promotion in the name that is above all names we decree and declare Make sure you are praying. Make your declaration. These that are brought before the God of all flesh Scriptures will never, never, never return as a disappointment. That when I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. The law of God. Those online so joining us from all over the world, connect in the name of Jesus. From America to Asia, and the UK, Canada, everywhere. We decree and declare that, that your requests are turned into testimonies. By the river, in the, the mighty name of Jesus who Christ, do not wither. Listen, when who bears fruit in I every want you to season. understand that this is not a as you are about this listening to this message. How we believe that now? your life is going to be like that man that planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves so are forever much. going to bear. Be and we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. 
We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you in the name of Jesus, I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus, every request here that is a death sentence, cancer, HIV, and any kind of incurable disease, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. Every impossible situation represented here, may the God of wonders arise tonight in the name of Jesus and do wonders. By the power of the Holy Ghost. For those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones, I declare, may the angel of God's presence, these angels that do not know time and distance, May they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and birth supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life, we are entering the second half of the year. It says, revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. I decree and declare, every spiritual weariness, every prayerlessness, it dies right now in the name of Jesus. Passion for the things of the Spirit like never before. Hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus. I declare prayer fire like never before let it rest upon your life now i decree and declare an appetite for god and the things of god i declare you receive it right now i pray over your life every long standing issue you have prayed you have fasted you have sought counsel it has refused to change in the name that is above all names i decree and declare by this time next month return with your testimony by this time next month return with your testimony please believe it don't just shout amen believe it i come against patterns you have seen it in others you saw it in your father you saw it in your loved ones you saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things, and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven caused by the God of heaven everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead this month coming it must enter your hands I declare that it must enter your hands There are families where is the women that feed the men. Have you seen such families? No matter how hardworking the men are, they never feed the family. They get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend. It's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now. The grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early receive that anointing right now it says satisfy me early i'm saying it again 
everybody here who is a man and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life i decree and declare like jacob laban must let you go in the name of jesus i pray for every mordecai here you have been good to others you have been good to kings your records have been written but you have not been rewarded in this season by the spirit of god we open a book of remembrance in the name of jesus christ hallelujah anyone here called jobless by the god of heaven between now and the next three months like the ark of god in the house of obed edom i decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain may my god give it to you every dying business hear the word of the lord i don't care what has happened by the spirit that raised christ from the dead i speak to you come back to life now come back to life now everyone who is in ministry here no matter what level there are dimensions i pray for you you will go back to your various churches fellowships and assemblies and a dimension of fire a dimension of insight you have never seen receive in the name of jesus everyone here called barren by the god of heaven in the name of jesus according to the time of life return with your children these are not empty prophecies believe them they are backed up by the jealousy of god they will come to pass in the name of jesus i don't know where the helpers of your destiny are but in the name of jesus every man who must arise in this season for your sake to favor you wherever they are around this globe by the spirit of grace i call them to your life now i call them to your life now the bible says that strangers shall feed your flock it says your gates shall be open continually it shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the gentiles people you do not know i compel them to be interested in your lifting in the name of jesus christ i prayed a prayer like this one time and one of us god just opened a door and a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira listen it doesn't take time it doesn't take time there is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life every area of struggle i stand by the god of heaven who is called ebenezer the god of jeshuron in the name of jesus receive help from the lord I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects it's just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus right now I connect your ideas to your helpers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I forgot to pray for those who are in various institutions writing their exams I know that many people had started their exams some have written and the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense you need the mercy of God in the name that is above all names much more than what you have written in the name of Jesus may the mercy of God show up in your exam
there is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy please pay attention our time is gone but i want to speak this into your life there are people who are not very smart the prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable the prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn it's a system of god's mercy it will be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles there are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation but there is the ordinance of prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the God who has helped me by his grace the God who has helped this ministry I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here due for promotion but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ finally I want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life I pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value I connect you to those eyes in the name of Jesus. Any pit you have found yourself in, I must pray this. Financially, whatever it is, you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out. May that God you believe in bring you out of it now. In the name of Jesus finally I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word the Lord declared that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life by the force of right words and by the power of the no the name that is above all names I declare to you May your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you return with testimonies. Some of you this night, before you get to your homes, your phones, you will see text messages that are full of wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we give you all the praise. We bless you because you have honored this house. You have made it a place of answers. You have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, Man of God, I've seen the wonders I once gave my heart to the Lord, but as it is right now, I need mercy, I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here, 
inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it'll be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two win that war today win that war today win that war today the bible says in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness three someone is still coming apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them very quickly join them very quickly i expect people to come from outside please clear the way for those coming from outside clear the way for those coming from outside overflow one two three if you're coming don't be sluggish run very quickly we're out of time run quickly run quickly we're out of time apostle i want to come but i'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father come quickly come quickly come quickly come quickly give them a big god bless you whilst they come takes a lot of courage but win that war young and old run to jesus the bible says ye must be born again hallelujah praise the lord i want to salute all of you thank you so much for coming to make this decision lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is from the depth of your heart jesus is here say after me lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i have seen your wonders and i declare that i need you this night i declare that you are my lord you are my savior you are my king i receive your life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life i am a child of god i'm changed forever amen keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for i thank you because when you hung on that cross they were worth your blood they were worth the tears they were worth the death i pray in the name of jesus according to scripture your sins are forgiven and the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of jesus i decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye